Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 12 of the Zero to CSWP series. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited. This is the last episode of this series, which means by the end, you should be able to take and pass the CSWP exam with confidence. In the video, we're going to be practicing segment 3 of the CSWP exam, which covers assemblies, but you probably already knew that at this point. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of any future updates or episodes that I have in the future. So, with that out of the way, let's just get right into the video. To download the questions for the exam, simply go to the GrabCAD link in the description. The first question asks us to add the part base, then find the center of mass based on a coordinate system in the part. Let's create a new assembly, then insert our base part. We can select the green check to insert it. Then we can add our coordinate system by clicking on this point and selecting the vertices to define our axes. Then let's go to our mass properties and select our new coordinate system. As well, let's make sure to have three decimals of accuracy and then our answer is listed. The next question asks us to add a part, some specific mates, and then find the center of mass again with the same coordinate system. We can add the width mate. concentric mate, and then add the distance mate using a distance of 22 inches between the two faces listed in the question. To get our answer, again we can use the mass properties and get our coordinate system center of mass. Next it wants us to add a subassembly and a part and make some more mates. We can first add the z-axis subassembly and apply the coincident mate as listed. Then we can add our CNC part one, adding the necessary coincident parallel and distance mates as well. Before we add our path mate, we need to make our z-axis flexible so that our z-axis can move up and down to follow the path. And as well, we need to delete the distance mate on our gantry. To finalize this, we can add the path mate between the edge of our plasma cutter tip and the part that would be machined, CNC part 1. Adding the percentage along the path as 65%. Of course, we can get our center of mass again. Then in the next question, it asks us to make an edit to the bottom part. It lists the values to change, so we can directly edit the sketch in our assembly and rebuild the assembly to update the changes. Once it is updated, the path mate will update, and again we can get our center of mass answer.
The next question switches it up with an interference detection and asks us to replace CNC part 1 with another part, CNC part 2. The part we need to replace it with is CNC part 2 so we can delete the bottom part and then insert the new part. The question asks us to replace all the mates so that the part's bottom left corner is in the same position as the old bottom part. We could have used the replace components button to do this, but we'll keep it simple by just recreating the mates. Again, we don't need to recreate the path mate. Then we need to know the volume of the largest interference in our assembly. We can go to interference detection, calculate, and give our answer in inches cubed. Lastly is collision detection. First, we can move our gantry to the back of the base with a coincident mate. Then enable collision detection and stop on collision. We can drag our z-axis until it stops and measure the distance between the faces to get our answer. On the exam, these are the type of questions you will see. The models may be more complex and there probably will be more questions, but as long as you don't get overwhelmed, you'll do a good job. Thank you so much for watching episode 12 and the whole series of Zero to CSWP. I wish you the best of luck on the CSWP exam, but hopefully at this point, you don't need it. Once you're done with the CSWP exam, I have some other series on my channel which will help you get to even further SOLIDWORKS education, knowledge, and certification. I have series coming out on the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Advanced exams, such as for weldment, sheet metal, drawing tools, or surfacing, and even the expert exam, which is the crown jewel of all SOLIDWORKS certification. Again, thank you, best of luck, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for any future series. With that out of the way, I'll see you in the next video.